Thank you. All right. So some background because um, I can't say I work at Google and you guys would know exactly what I do and not many people know exactly what uh, Bullmore AMF is or stand for. So just a quick background. We are the largest owner operator of bowling alleys in the world um, with over 300 locations, a ton of employees and our brand portfolio really um, ranges from more of a traditional bowling alley like an AMF and a Brunswick zone, kind of like the more bowling alleys of your youth, mom and pop, lots of league play, to um, the middle section, which is more like the family entertainment centers. We have laser tag, arcades, ropes courses. Um, and then the high end um, end of things, where are more um, nightclub-esque, bowmores, um, boleros. Uh, we get a lot of celebrities and a lot of fun press for that. So we really are um, all things to all people and own quite a, quite a number of uh, brands within the same uh, company. So this omni-channel thing, obviously why we're all here today. There are a lot of definitions obviously going around and like Joe said, it's kind of a word that was just kind of made up by marketers to sound smart. Um, one of the definitions that I, that I found that I quite liked was um, it really heralds an interconnectedness among channels um, and touch points that really blurs the distinction. So you're going from your phone to you're looking at social media and then you turn on your TV and then you pull out your tablet. You know, it all really becomes, you know, one message, one mind, one voice as you're speaking to your consumer. So, you know, what do you think is the most ubiquitous touch point or, you know, channel? And obviously you guys know what I'm speaking about and that's mobile. Um, mobile really has become part of who we are. Um, it's an appendage. Uh, we can't live without it. Um, Noah said, you know, every person checks their phone, what, 150 times a day. I would argue that marketers probably check their phones double that period of time. Um, work email, social media, I mean, it's everything. It's part of who we are. Um, some fun, or you might think scary, stats about mobile. Um, there are more mobile devices than there are people in this world. I think that goes without saying. Um, more people access the internet from their mobile phones than their personal computers. Obviously, that's a really big important thing as we're speaking about your mobile experience. Um, this one's actually a little sad. Um, more people in this world own a mobile phone than a toothbrush, um, and that is a somewhat real statistic. Um, and the last one, which I thought was a little funny, 80% of millennials say the smart thing is the first thing that they reach for when they wake up. So if you're having a bad dream, you're not going to reach for your spouse or the person next to you, you're going to reach for your smartphone and you know all will be well in the world. Um, so when you're thinking about the mobile experience, you know there's a couple of different paths to go down and that is, are you going to build a native mobile app um, or are you going to really invest the time and resources into building a really great responsive website? Now, I'm calling this the mobile investment uh, smackdown because, uh, you know, if you guys have unlimited uh, funding, resources, staff, you can build both and be great in both channels and all will be well in the world. But like a lot of us, we have finite resources. We've got a lot of projects going on and a lot of times it has to be a little like Sophie's Choice and you have to kind of give up one in order to make the other one um, really work hard for you. So a lot of us, you know, have to take into consideration, you know, really what's the best for my brand because it, it really is different depending on what vertical you're in, the industry, um, where your clients are. So some things I generally like to think of, um, you know, and, and would recommend that you think of when you're trying to pick which experience really works best for you. Um, very often, uh, brands really, they raise their hand and they're thinking, me too, me too, and they want a mobile app. It's really fancy, it's shiny, it's cool, everyone wants to talk about it. And especially when you invest a lot of money in it, you're gonna invest a lot of uh, money into developing it, you're going to invest a lot of money into marketing it. So let's send an email about our app. Let's you know, talk about it on Facebook. It's really great. Um, all nice and shiny, gets all of the attention. Um, however, there are instances where it may not necessarily be the best business decision for you. Um, so this is my little analogy, whereas the apps are the plastics. Um, sometimes responsive websites are really more like the mathletes. They're the workhorses. Um, they're definitely not as glamorous. They don't get write-ups in tech publications um, the way apps do. 
but um, a lot of times they offer really a better experience um, and a smarter investment choice, just in terms of the return that you're gonna get on this investment that you put into it. You know, there's always an app for that. Um, there was an article recent, written recently, um, which I actually quite liked in TechCrunch, about this app fatigue. Um, and they were referring to uh, the mobile app space as kind of a gold rush. And like old, all gold rushes, it needs to come to an end. And we're starting to see that the market is extremely saturated, and it's extremely hard to differentiate yourself among the millions of apps that are out there, because there are millions of apps. Um, one of the quotes that I quite liked from this article was, apps have become the new crack, um, predictably followed by endless anxiety. Um, you know, the big reason why apps can be so problematic is because they are not device agnostic. You are constantly developing your app for multiple platforms. There has to be constant releases. Um, I, for one, get kind of annoyed every time I get prompted to update all of my apps. I'm like, geez, again? I just did this yesterday. Um, so, I mean, that's something to think about when you're looking at the app experience. So, some general guidelines um, that, you know, to keep in mind. The first one is consider the scope. You know, how much can you stomach in terms of the development effort, cost, timelines? You know, where you have your staff and your team spending their time and resources. Second one is consider the customer journey and actually getting a person to your mobile experience. Um, is it disruptive or unnatural behavior to get a person from going from what they're doing on their mobile phone to experiencing your brand on their mobile phone? The next one is consider the actual utility. And the operative word here is actual. A lot of times um, companies build apps and they think it can do all this great fancy stuff. Um, but when you think about it, a lot of times a responsive website can do the same amount of things. And it's actually uh, the friction in order to get a person there is actually a lot less. Um, and the next one is consider the cha changing landscape of mobile technology. Mobile phone screens, obviously you guys know, are changing. Um, Lord only knows where the industry is gonna be a few years from now. So keep that in mind as you go about investing time, money, and resources, shrinking your experience down into this little um, you know, bit of real estate. So for the first one, in terms of considering the scope, um, app development, obviously, extremely costly, as I mentioned, because apps are not device agnostic, while responsive websites, you build it, and it's one experience that can be um, had um, by anyone with a mobile phone with an internet connection, a smartphone, shall we say. Um, and mobile technology is changing, so it actually wasn't that long ago where mo uh, responsive websites really were bad. I mean, responsive has gotten so much better. You would pull up a, a, a web page on your phone and it would look like crap. So apps were really the only choice you had if you wanted a somewhat gr good experience on a mobile device. So um, I actually, back in 2006, I was working for ESPN Mobile Publishing, and we were licensing ESPN content to um, mobile, the big mobile carriers, and our biggest product was our WAP pages. So I'm gonna date myself here. Um, and I really wish I had held on to some of our sales collateral, because if you just Google WAP pages, um, I think I got a lot of like Fetty WAP results, which I'm not even completely sure what that means. Um, but here are some screenshots, not of ESPN, but of other sports sites. I can tell you our WAP page looked very similar to these, and it was our, it was our biggest product. People loved our WAP pages, and we were all very proud of ourselves for, for selling this like big technological you know, project and working in this technology space. And now when you look at it, you think, wow, really? We were spending so much time on that, but that wasn't that long ago, you know, all things considered. Um, this is 2016, you know, responsive can look just as good as an app. Um, shameless plug, we recently redesigned our website. Um, I can see one of my developers sitting over there. Um, put a lot of time and effort into it. And, you know, people are going to our website for really basic things, basic utility. They want to know our hours of operation. They want to know where we're located. And, you know, you can really make that look just as good as an app if you have the right design and uh, developers on your project. Um, so the next one is, is getting the user actually to your experience too disruptive? And here's a quick example. So I was on my mobile phone, cruising Facebook as I, as I do, and um, while on Facebook I saw an ad for Zappos. 
I wasn't really paying attention to what the buttons are saying. I think what you'll find is most people really glance over these things and they don't necessarily, they read keywords. They're not reading full sentences. So I'm like, hey, this is interesting. Let me click on it. Soon as I click on it, I'm taken out of Facebook. I'm br brought to the app store and it's asking me to download their app before I can even see their shoes. So to me, fail. This is, this is a bad experience. And the first thing I did, and I wasn't even thinking of this as a marketer, I was thinking of this as a consumer. I'm like, no, 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 I'm in the middle of doing something. I can't be bothered with this. So I immediately abandoned the experience. Uh, so I go back to Facebook, same day, and I'm cruising and I see a Fry ad. So I think, oh, this is interesting. Let me click on this. What it does is now within Facebook, it can bring up the responsive website within the app itself. And this is a very frictionless process. And you can even notice on the upper right hand side, there's a share button. So I'm not taken out of the application I'm currently in. It's very smooth and fluid transition. And I can even check out, now I didn't check out during this one experience because I was too busy taking screenshots, but you know, I thought this was a really great example of making it really easy for the consumer and an example where responsive really is a, is a great you know, preferred method of uh, going. Um, the last one is, or sorry, the second to last one is consider the journey, uh, sorry, consider the utility. So this was an email I got from Sephora, love Sephora. Um, makeup seems to be a fun trend this morning with Noah talking about it as well. I don't know, which is funny since I'm the only woman on the panel. Um, <laughs> so this is a, an email I got from Sephora, really touting their mobile application because they're so proud of it and I'm sure they invested quite a lot of time and money and resources into it. And at the bottom, which I've uh, blown up is the reasons why you'll love it. Um, now, I looked through all of these, and I'm not going to go through them one at a time, but a lot of things, I'm asking myself two questions. First, I'm asking myself is, is this offering me something that I can't already get on their website or by being a member of their loyalty club? The second one is, is it worth its space on my phone? You know, is this worth me actually going and downloading something and using my data? And for most things, the answer was no, or it was a lukewarm, like, eh, maybe. The only two things that I saw were the virtual artist and the barcode scanner when you're in a store. So these are two um, great examples, and there's a reason for it. Apps with mobile um, device-enabled features really are beneficial and actually offer utility. So this is when you're using the hardware of your mobile phone to actually get something done. So on the left hand side, you'll see the, um, the virtual artist, which is really cool. You don't even have to take a picture of yourself. You just hold your phone out and it scans your face and it automatically puts a lip color on you. You can change you know, any lip color um, and it immediately tells you on the top what it is. You can buy it very easily and seamlessly. In the middle, um, that's actually the Dwayne Reed Walgreens application, which I think is really fun because you can print photos, um, but it can access the photo gallery on your phone. I mean, be honest, who carries cameras with them nowadays? All of the pictures that we take are with our mobile phones. So isn't it nice where we could t access our library pretty easily? And the last one is um, Amex. And this is really simple, all things considered, but the fact that I can sign in with my fingerprint scan instead of having to remember my passcode and enter it in is actually a really big, nice utility for me. I probably have at least 30 different passwords. This makes it nice and easy. So the last one is consider the changing landscape of mobile screen sizes. And there are a few charts here. I don't think this is surprising to anyone. Obviously over time, this, you know, you think back to, remember Razer phones, the flip, the flip phones? I was so excited when I got my first Razer phone. It was pink. Um, and then I think I remember spilling Masamon curry on it the second day after I got it. But, you know, we thought that was so cool technology. And then you look back and you look at the phones that we have now. They're bigger. They're better. Um, the last chart on the bottom is the time spent on mobile devices. And for anyone in the back who can't read it, the, um, the very giant bar there um, refers to what, uh, what a concept called the phablet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the phablet. Um, which is a mix between a phone and a tablet, and it looks really awkward, but believe it or not, a lot of people have these and they use them, and as ridiculous as it might seem, it offers a lot of real estate. Um, so you know, consider that when you're trying to shrink your website down to this little bitty space, um, you know, things are constantly changing. Obviously, this looks a little ridiculous, but you know, there wasn't that long ago when this looked ridiculous. 
and obviously we got past that. So who knows, you know, years from now, what, what, what phones are going to be looking like. And, you know, I wanted to add this because the future of technology is really exciting. Um, they're looking at screens that are, that are bendable. So who knows, in five years from now, maybe you can take something out of your pocket and unfold it and have something as wide as a desktop screen. And then you do your mobile experience, you fold it back up, and you put it back in your pocket. Um, another example is, you know, devices that are capable of projecting. You know, maybe I can project on an entire wall what's on my phone. Well then, am I really worried about having an app experience that's oversimplified? Um, one of the things that I find quite annoying when I'm on my iPad sometimes is that I don't want the mobile version of a website. It's too simplistic for me. I have a lot of real estate. You know, it's, it looks like, you know, hooked on phonics where it's too basic and too simple. And I actually want the bigger experience. So, you know, just a quick summary, you know, when you're thinking of what, what, uh, what method is, is the best for you. And I don't want to hate on apps because, you know, the world of app development is, is great and a lot of people spend, you know, their entire careers there. But, you know, just understand, think of what's best for your business. Understand the true scope of work, the customer journey, uh, the utility you're actually offering and what features, um, you know, are valuable. And then consider the changing landscape of mobile technology and where things are going to be in a few years. Thanks.